In this problem, Alexa's friends got her a skydiving lesson for her birthday. Her helicopter took off from the skydiving center, which is right here, ascending at an angle of 20 degrees, so that's this angle, and traveled a distance of 3.4 kilometers before she fell in a straight line perpendicular to the ground. So she went up in this direction for 3.4 miles and then fell straight down while skydiving. And the question is, how far from the skydiving center did Alexa land? So we're looking at this distance here, since this is our skydiving center, and this is where she landed. So we need to know that distance. They're not asking how far she was in the air for, or how many kilometers she fell. We're asking how far she landed from the center. So let's give that a variable. We can call that x or whatever you like. So let's define it. That x is the distance, we'll say, between the skydiving center and where she landed. And once you define your variable, then you can set up your trigonometric ratio. So let's use our SOHCAHTOA again so that we have all of our trig definitions. And let's think about which sides we have. We have the side next to the angle, so remember that is our adjacent side. Let me use a darker color. And we also have the long side of the triangle, so we have our hypotenuse. So going and looking at our trig functions, notice that the cosine has both the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Since we know that the cosine of some angle is the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So let's set this up using our numbers. We have that the cosine of 20 degrees is equal to the adjacent side x divided by this hypotenuse, which is 3.4. And we'll just assume our units are in kilometers since that's what will go in the box here. So now we just need to solve this equation. And remember that cosine of 20 degrees, this is just a number. And so we're going to multiply each side of the equation by this denominator here so that we can cancel it out and get x by itself. So we'll multiply each side by 3.4. And these will now cancel each other out since that's just 1. Something divided by itself is always 1. So that 3.4 times by the cosine of 20 degrees is equal to that missing distance that we're trying to find. And just to help our intuition, since this is a 20 degree angle, if we subtract from 90, we can find this angle, since this is our right angle. So this would have to be 70 degrees. So we would expect this side to be the second biggest. So it should be somewhat close to our hypotenuse, since this is somewhat close to 90. Though it's hard to say exactly what it will be just by this sort of guess and check work. But we do know that it will definitely be bigger than this side. Of course, we won't be finding this side. So let's use our calculator now. And we're gonna clear out what we had before and type in this 3.4 times by the cosine of 20 degrees. And we're still in our degree mode, but it never hurts to check. And we get 3.19 if we're going to the nearest hundredth. So x is 3.19, and that's kilometers. So that's what we would put in the box here. And it did match up with kind of what we expected. We expected it to be somewhat close to our hypotenuse since a 70 degree angle is fairly close to a 90 degree angle. So let's do one more problem. And in this one, we have that Barbara is building a wooden cabin. The cabin is 42 meters wide. So that's what they give us down here. She obtained a bunch of 27 meter long wooden beams for the roof of the cabin. So that's these two red beams here. Naturally, she wants to place the roof beams in such an angle that each pair of opposite beams would meet exactly in the middle. So it looks like we want these to meet right in the middle of the house or in the middle of the roof. So what is the angle of elevation in degrees of the roof beams? And they indicate here which angle we're looking for, but it's the angle of elevation because it's going up. 
and we want to round to the nearest tenth. So this one's a little bit tricky since we don't have our triangle explicitly set up for us, but we were told that we want the beams to meet right in the middle. And we know that this length here across the entire house, that's 42. And I believe we're dealing with meters. And so if we want this to meet in the middle, this length and this length would have to be the same. Or essentially each of these would be half of this 42 meter length, this width of the cabin. And half of 42 is just 21. And we are missing that angle. So in this case, we're going to have to use the inverse trig function since you need to use those anytime you need to find the angle. And so we can call the angle whatever we want. Let me actually make a little bit more room there. So this is a 21 meter length there to go halfway across the house. And we can call this angle theta. So with that in mind, let me first just redraw the triangle so that's a little bit more explicit. And with our right triangle, we're going to set up a relationship between the angles and the side lengths using our trig definitions. So we'll write our SOHCAHTOA. And we have the side length next to the angle. That's our adjacent side. And we have the long side. That's our hypotenuse. And just like the last example, we're going to use the cosine function. So we know that cosine of our angle in this case, we called it theta, is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent is 21. The hypotenuse is 27. So this question comes down to finding this missing angle. And whenever you're missing the angle and you can't plug in an angle here, you want to use your inverse trig functions. So to do that, remember, we need to understand that if we put the cosine function or any trig function inside its inverse function, that essentially the function and the inverse cancel each other out and we get whatever our independent variable is, in this case, theta. So using this information, and again, this is generally true of functions. If you put a function inside its inverse, you always get back whatever that independent variable is. So we need to do the same thing here. We need to take an inverse cosine of each side of the equation, and that way we can essentially get theta outside of the cosine function and be able to solve for it. So let's do that up here. We're going to take an inverse cosine of each side, so the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta, and that will be equal to the inverse cosine of 21 over 27. And like I mentioned, when you plug in the function into its inverse, they're going to cancel each other out, and we just get theta, whatever your independent variable is. And so theta would be equal to the inverse cosine of 21 over 27. And this we can actually put into our calculator to find that missing angle. So let's get the calculator out and we're going to put inverse cosine of 21 over 27. Notice the inverse sine functions are the blue lettering here. So we need to hit second. So second and then inverse cosine. And we'll put in our 21 divided by 27 and this should give us our missing angle. And we get 38.94 but we need to go to the or the tenth. So that's just 38.9, and that's what we put in the box. And again, it's in degrees because it's our missing angle. And so this angle here, this is our final answer.